In this Playwright tutorial, we are going to see assertions in Playwright. There are two types of assertions. One is hard assertion and second one is soft assertion. So let's understand what is hard assertion. Say for example, we have a one test case that contains five steps. Say for example, I have written an assertion after the second step. In that case, if assertion got failed in the second step, that test will be terminate, terminated then and there itself. But in case of soft assertion, the execution will be happen till the fifth step basically. So soft assertions are nothing but, so these are the type of assertions. So whenever assertion got failed, so it will not stop the test execution. It will complete the test execution if you are using the soft assertion. If you are using the hard assertion, your test will be terminated when assertion got failed. So let's see the important assertions you will be using across the project. The very first one is URL. So we will see how to verify the URL and second one is title. How you can verify the title of the web page and the third one is text. For example, you want to validate a text displayed on the web page. So that can be validated by using the method called to have text. And next one is editable. So let's let's say for example we have a button. So we want to check whether that button is editable or not. Let's say we have the text box. So we will check whether text box is editable or not by using the to be editable method. And next one we have visible. So we will be using the to be visible. We will be checking the element is visible or not so that we can perform the next action. So it can be click or it can be entering some data into the element. And next one we have is enabled. So we will check whether element is enabled or not so that if it is enabled we can perform the action on that web page element. And the seventh one we have is disabled. So many times we will be checking whether the element is disabled or enabled so such kind of scenarios so there might be a scenario after entering the data and we will be saving the record and after that we will be seeing that whether that data is editable or not whether it is disabled or not so that can be checked by using the to be disabled and next one we have the empty to be empty method so for example we have the text box so we'll check whether that particular text box is text box is empty or not by using the to be empty method and the last one we have we have is to have count so basically let's say for example we have identified a element and we have a let's say five elements so we have written xpath or css selector so that matches with the five elements so whenever i open the web page all the five elements should be present in the web page right so that count can be asserted by using the to have count so let's see all these examples in the real time web application. Now I will navigate to the VS code and let's create a quickly one spec file. So here I'll see the file name as assertions.spec.js and I will go to the one of the test and I will simply copy the test and I will come back to the assertions spec file. So I will keep the only playwright test skeleton so let's update the test name as assertions in playwright so that's it guys now let's see the scenario so firstly we will validate the url title and text so here i have opened the google.com and here i will search with playwright by testers so here I will take the some part of the URL and I will open the another tab. So this is the URL what we are using it. So after hitting the URL, we are getting the this Google search results, right? So let's use this URL and we will validate the this URL is correctly appearing or not. So firstly, I will add the URL. Let's navigate to the URL first. To assert anything, we have to use the so let's say here I'll assert URL. So we have to use the one keyword called expect. 
to verify anything. To get the URL, simply I am using the current page object followed by simply I am calling one method called to have URL. And inside this function, simply we have to pass the expected value. So I will pass the correct value this time. So this is what we are expecting in this URL. And I will put some weight. Here I'll say await followed by page. Wait for timeout. And here I'll pass some seconds. That's it, guys. So if I run this test, it should launch the browser and it should enter the URL and it should validate the URL also. And if you see here, our test is getting passed. Let's say, for example, I will remove some part of the URL in the expected result. And this time it will get failed because the actual URL and the expected URLs are not matching in this case. And if you see here, so this is the expected string and this is the actual string. So those both, both the strings are not matching. So that's the reason our test is getting failed. So this is the expected failure. Now let's see how to assert the title. So if you see the title of this particular web page, so it is displaying playwright by test test talk hyphen Google search. So let's assert the this particular web page title. So here I'll say assert title. So it is very simple guys, same syntax we have to use it. And here simply we have to call to the method call to have title. So this function will get the current page title. And here we have to add the expected value. So expected value is playwright by tester stock. After that, there is a hyphen and followed by Google search. So let's add that text here. So Google search. So that's it guys. Now let's run the test now. And if you see here, so our test is getting passed, right? Say for example, if I remove something here, let's say I will remove by. So this time our test will get failed because the titles will be not matching. So whatever the actual and expected value will be not matching. So if you see here, expected and actual values are not matching. So this is the expected failure. Now let's see how to validate the, so here I'll say assert text. Say for example, in this web page, we will inspect this particular search text box and we will get the this particular text and we will validate with the our actual value. So simply I will inspect the element and we will write a simple CSS selector by using that we will identify the element so here I'm writing just a single quotation and the brackets for the attribute and value and if you see here so it is matching with three elements but we will focus on the very first element so let's copy the CSS selector so this time we are asserting the text from the web page so here I'm using await followed by so expect keyword I'm using and inside this I'm using the page object dot so here I'm saying locator and inside the locator I'm adding the locator what we just copied it from the Google and once we are having the locator so here I'm saying the first so this particular element was matching with three elements so that's the reason I want to find only first element and perform the action that's it guys so here we have the locator now so I want to verify this locator text, right? So that's the reason here I'm calling to the method called to have text. And here we have to pass the 
expected value so this is the expected value so let's copy the playwright by tested stock that's it guys now let's run the test and it should compare the web element text and the expected text And if you see here guys, so our test is perfectly working fine. So if I pass some incorrect data in the expected, that time it will not match the expected and actual value, then obviously our test will get failed. And if you see here, actual and expected values are not matching. So this is the expected failure. So that's it guys. So we have seen how to verify the URL, title and text. Now we will see how to use the to be editable, to be visible and to be enabled. So already we have identified the text box. We will see whether that particular text box is editable, visible or enabled or not. So here I'll say assert editable enabled and another one is visible so let's do all the three things in a single time so what i will do is simply i will take this particular element so this particular element is nothing but the search text box what we have identified just now So that's it guys. So here simply I'm calling to the one method called to be editable. If it is editable, then our test will be passed. If it is not editable, our test will get failed. So in our case, it is editable. So our test will get passed. In the similar way, we can use the to be visible. So basically we can check whether element is visible or not. By using that, we can perform the next set of actions. So here I'll say to be visible and in the similar way I will call to the another method called to be enabled so in our case so all the assertions will get passed because our text box is editable it is visible and it is enabled also right now let's run the test now and our test will pass And if you see here guys, so our test is perfectly working fine. So there are no failures also. Now let's see how to use to be disabled, to be empty and to have count. So basically disabled, we are verifying whether element is disabled or not. And we are using uh, to be empty to check the element is empty or not. And final one, we are checking the count. So let's see all, all three examples. So here I'll say assert, disabled, and followed by that empty we are checking the element is empty or not then we are checking the final one is count so we have the, we have already the locator that's the text box we have identified we'll check this text box is disabled or not so in our case it is enabled our test will get fail so that is fine so here it's said to be disabled so our test will find oh, sorry our test will get fail because we are checking this element is disabled or not but in our case it is got enabled the expected behavior is our test will get fail so our our element is active now and if you see here received is enabled and expected is disabled so this is the expected failure guys this is how you can use the to be disabled you can apply this to be disabled where you can see the element got disabled now let's use how to check the empty 
So if I, for example, here I'm calling one method called to be empty. So I'm using the same element. I'm checking whether this element is empty or not. In our case, this element is not empty. It has already some text in it. The behavior of this particular assertion is it will get fail. That is fine. We can run it. So you can check any text box where it is empty. So in that case, this assertion will get passed. And if you see here guys, so expected value is empty. We are expecting empty as a text box, but we are receiving not empty. So here you can write after the bracket. Simply we can pass the dot not. So here I'm checking not empty that particular text box, right? So if I run this test and this will work fine. So previously we were checking only the text box is empty or not, but this time we are checking text box should not be empty. It should have some value. So this time our test will get passed. And if you see here, our test is getting passed, right? So this is how you can use the to be empty method as well. Now let's see how to use the to have count. If you see here guys, so we have the one method called to have count. So by using this one, we can get the current page elements. For example, if we have located one element and if it is matching with multiple elements, basically that will return you the count of that element. And then we can compare it by using the to have count. So if you see the X path, sorry, we, if you see the CSS selector, whatever we have written, right? So this CSS selector is matching with the three elements, right? And if you see the third element, guys, so this is the third element. If you see here, three of three. And if I go a little bit up here, right? So this particular element is there inside the iframe. So that's the reason the count is here only two. And here I'm again using the same locator. And this time I'm not using the first. And after that, here I'm calling to the method called to have count. And inside that I'm passing the expected value as two. That's it guys. So our test will get passed because this particular locator is matching with only two elements. As I said, the third element is there inside the another iframe. So we should not, we will be not able to identify the third element. So that's the reason count of this locator is two. Let's run the test now. And it should find the locator count and it should match with the expected count value. And if you see here, so we have the sum error. So directly we have to pass the number, not a string. So that's the reason let's remove the quotations. That is fine. Now I will rerun the test once again. So if you see here guys, our test is perfectly working fine, right? Say for example, if I pass three number here, so our test will get fail because the element is matching with only two elements. And if you see here guys, the expected value is three, but we received only two from the web page. So this is the expected failure guys. So this is how you can use the all different types of assertions in the playwright.